Hi, this is Barbara Dainek and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 90 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of guide wire entrapment and fracture, similar in some ways with the case 88, however with a different ending. The patient presented with exertional angina, no significant disease on the left, however there was an intermediate lesion on the right coronary artery, FFR was 0.75, therefore PCI was attempted. The right coronary was engaged with a 6 French AL1 guide, wire with the BMW wire, balloon angioplasty was done, delivery was challenging, requiring a guide extension, and then there was loss of guide position, so the right coronary was re-engaged with a JR4 guide this time. Wiring was challenging, a run-through wire was used this time, and then upon withdrawal of the wire, the wire became entrapped in the proximal portion of the right coronary artery stent. And this is an example where you don't want to pull hard because that may lead to fracture of the wire that may require emergency surgery. The goal here is to try to free up the entrapped wire without fracturing, if at all possible. So the first step is to advance a balloon or a microcatheter as far down as possible and pull gently. If it doesn't work, inflate that small balloon and again pull gently. And if that doesn't work as well, get a second guide, get a second guide wire next to the entrapped one and they inflate the balloon in an attempt to free it from the wall and once again pull gently. If everything fails, then emergency surgery may be needed. But one one wants to avoid is fracture of the wire unraveling into the aorta, which will definitely require surgery for removal. In this case, we were probably fairly vigorous in pulling back. You can see the wire is already deformed over here. A second uh, guide was advanced next to the wire and another wire was inserted in the right coronary artery in attempts to free it without success. And we can also see here Murphy's law, which is complications beget complications. Here we had an issue with wire entrapment. Now we also have an issue with air embolism, a lot of bubbles going down, and no flow into the distal right coronary artery. So we have uh, the combination of entrapped equipment, but also occlusion of flow that can lead to bad hemodynamic consequences as well as chest discomfort. Um, despite of multiple attempts, we were unable to get the wire out. Um, as a last ditch attempt, a balloon was inserted into the guide catheter that had the entrapped wire, it was inflated, and then pulled back vigorously, vigorously in an attempt to break it, and indeed the wire broke, but unfortunately we do have now a part of the wire being out in the aorta. You can see it intermediately in some of the frames. This is a large ensnare trying to get those part of the wire without success. And this is another view where we can see intermittently in some of the views the wire protruding coming back in the aorta from the proximal right coronary artery. So now what we have is a fractured guide wire protruding into the aorta. And this is something that cannot be solved percutaneously because you have coils of the wire, and this could be multiple coils, potentially causing thrombus and embolization either in the coronary or, even worse, in the systemic circulation, including stroke. So when this happens, there is no solution, but uh, surgery is the only way to get around it. And once again, here is the entrapped wire. We can see some of the frames, the wire coming back all the way into the aorta. This was confirmed with echocardiography. We can see here a transthoracic echo, the wire coming from the right cusp and protruding all the way into the aorta. And then the patient did go emergently to the operating room, and this is the intraoperative TE. You can see some of the frames, the wire being all the way out in the aorta. And here are some other projections. Here we can see the wire being all the way into the right coronary sinus coming from the right coronary ostium. Also here is a three-dimensional view, showing the wire essentially swinging inside the ascending aorta. The patient did undergo successful surgery with bypass. The 
wire was removed and we can see here that the wire had probably come back and tied the knot into the proximal portion of the stand and then it had also unraveled. So you can see that this is very hard to retrieve this once the wire becomes unraveled. Every time you try to grasp these parts with a snare, all you are doing is making more and more pieces of this wire coming out of the order. So in summary, wire entrapment can be a catastrophic complication and may be more likely to happen when wires are being advanced through prior stands. So when advancing wires through stands, one should be very careful to avoid entrapment and even more so when the wire is being pulled back because that's when if there is a loop at the wire tip, it may come around and actually tie a knot into the struts of a previously deployed stand. If the wire gets entrapped, one should try with microcasters to free it up without pulling very hard. If, unfortunately, the wire fractures, the key question is whether there's wire fragments in the aorta or not. If there are wire fractures in the aorta, then surgery is needed. But if uh, the wire is completely inside the coronary artery, then it can be covered with another stent to prevent uh, thrombus formation or causing other problems. Thank you.